Hello, I'm Sharon Harvey Davis. At Amron, diversity and inclusion are a priority. We know that diversity of thought, when included in how we do business, produces a creative and innovative culture that helps us achieve our mission and supports our values. Our differences strengthen us, and because we have seen the positive impact of diversity and inclusion, Amron provides this training tool to enhance discussions across differences and build inclusive communities. Our theme throughout this video series is the courage to be all in. Courage helps us to bridge the gap between saying and doing. Courage is what helps us speak up when we believe something is not right. Courage has been a big factor in the life of the individual you will hear from next. The story of Frankie Muse Freeman, a civil rights leader, spent the vast majority of her 100 years fighting for equality for all. Mrs. Freeman is a lawyer from St. Louis who in 1964 was nominated by President Lyndon B. Johnson as the first woman to serve on the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Throughout her life, she has looked into the face of discrimination and bigotry, stared it down, and with tireless commitment, courageously achieved positive change. We hope this video will lead to a meaningful dialogue and a renewed sense of personal courage for you and the members of your group. Thank you for your participation and engagement in our Discussions Across Differences series. Joining us today is longtime civil rights attorney and the first woman to be appointed to the United States Commission on Civil Rights, Frankie Muse Freeman. Thank you so much for being here today. It's good to be here. I'm honored that you invited me. We needed you. Your legal work, your dedication to the community have made an impact locally, nationally, even internationally. Can you think of a time where you would be willing to say, I, Frankie Freeman, was courageous. No. All the work you've done. Well, a couple of things I've done, I think, I've maybe you saying, I must have lost my mind. <laughs> and those <laughs> would be? <laughs> and what were those? I think January 1965, just before the passage of the Civil Rights, Voting Rights Act, uh, before... They had been, the, a, a lot of people trying to vote had been denied the right to vote. And four churches in, had been about, about 15 miles from Jackson, Mississippi, had been burned. So when we decided to hold our hearing in Jackson, Mississippi, I and the commission, first of all, they determined, they found a and a hotel there was no problem. Had to, everything had to be, of course, with where everybody was available. There was no, there could be no discrimination, and then, of course, there was none. But then the, the, the night, the, the day before, I said I want to go. I want to, to drive out to to Canton, I, and I want to see because I can't believe that anybody would burn churches. And I really, I, I mean, I just couldn't believe that. And so they said, oh, no, you, 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 can't, you can't do that. I said, well, I, I want to go. I want to go. So if you can't do it with, with your government car, just get me a card and I'll, I'll go. So the next morning when I got, came down, the government, there was a car there, one of the cars that was used by the government. There were the warranty, the security officers, Dean Griswold of, of, of the Harvard Law School, and his wife who, who was there. So all of us went. 
And from that on, for every hearing that was held from then on, it was decided that the commission, which if it's staff or commissioner, wanted to check out a city, a city or a state before the hearing started, it would be done, and we did it from then on. When you, with your own eyes, saw the ruins of this church and recognized the hatred, the unacceptance that that represented, what did it do to you? It made, gave me knowledge of why we were there and that we had work to do, and so we were going to do it. We, and we continued, and it helped. It helped me. Every generation needs leaders. What do you say to those people coming along, the young people? How do we encourage them to take leadership? Well, I think, first of all, we start with ourselves because we, we, don't, we have to recognize that we have an individual responsibility. We talk about all men and women are created equal, but we want to be sure that they want to be sure that women are, and of course, there has been discrimination then against not just females, but not just people of color, but females without regard to color. Diversity and inclusion are very much the focus of this whole meeting today and are doing these uh, tapings. What role does courage play in diversity and inclusion? It's a very important because you have to recognize that there will be people who will disagree with you. And you have to be have the courage to at least not give up, but be sure to be sh that they are people who, of integrity who agree with you in basic some things, but they disagree on others. And that, of course, we all disagree on some things. For those who come after you, it's important that they know about your life and what you've done, you and others. But what do you want people to remember about your journey? What legacy do you leave? Believe in God. Believe. Believe. See, I open uh, each morning my prayer, order my steps, help me to be of service, help me to make a difference, help me to recognize the value of love and working to make a difference and, and, and to serve each other, to be kind to each other, always, always, and recognizing also that there are some people who do not agree with you in my case, leave them alone. And that's how you've lived your life? Well, I guess I don't <laughs> I'm here. I think, you know, I, I listened to you say that your parents taught you and you observed that if there was something that wasn't right, it was up to you to make a difference, to change things. Some people don't see that there's a problem. If they, if you are in a workforce, mm -hmm. then you have a. There's certain duties that you have, that as as an individual, as an employee, you have certain responsibilities for integrity. So that that I, I, I don't see that. I mean, I recognize that there are differences of opinion about, but leadership is sometimes misled, too. How do you get the courage to speak up, to be one of those people who makes a difference? I just said, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me to do my part. Help me to say what I need to say, and help me to get it done in a way that people will see, read, and understand, and I, 
for instance, I may have been talking to you and gotten all mixed up in something. Thank you so much. <laughs> You've just uh, added to our day. Thank you. Thank you.